The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Okay, um, my talk today is on the Drupal's features module. If you were here last hour, you have seen my presentation. Um, uh, due to scheduling, uh, this is where I ended up. Uh, but anyway, uh, about me, which is going to be completely new from the previous presentation. Um, my name's Steven Jackson. I'm co-owner at OS Solutions with uh, Mr. Roger Soper over here. Um, I'm a back-end developer. I, I work with uh, PHP, with MySQL databases, um, do a, a bunch of you know Linux configuration and lots of C, Objective C, C++, Java, et cetera. Um, I've been working with Drupal for about three years now. Um, my partner started with four, but I started with five. Um, but to go on, uh, you know, what is features? Basically, features is a contrib module, so you can go to drupal.org slash project slash features and download the module itself. Um, and what it does is uh, it, it logically bundles um, any components on your Drupal system that you would like. Um, and you can attach attack the problem in you know kind of whatever way you want whether uh, like Connerton had mentioned you know a photo gallery if you want to bundle it up photo gallery or if you want to take another direction and bundle up just uh, you know kind of permissions or kind of admin and kind of deal um, why features uh, basically Drupal loves the database there's not a whole lot of code on the system um, pretty much everything gets read out of the node table, the users table, and well, every table. Um, however, this is a nightmare if there's more than one person on the project, basically. Um, because, you know, versioning a database is pretty impossible. Um, maybe if you contact Oracle, they can hook you up. But uh, if you got that kind of cash, then that's cool. Uh, but so, so basically what, what you're gonna do is take, you know, this database and kind of put it into code so you can version control what's in the database. Um, and then what's really great about it is it's then distributable. Um, anybody that has a Drupal website can then take your feature and install it and uh, now have your own functionality in there that has all your different views, content types, permissions, strong arm variables, etc. cetera. Um, basically, I decided that slides suck. Um, they, they're boring, you're gonna fall asleep, so I'm just gonna show you what it is. And hopefully, okay, and the screens are mirrored. For some reason, ah, you see the library from his telephone. There's my status. Okay, this really screws with my resolution there. All right, so this is a site that I just installed from a uh, install profile. Um, this is one of Sony's deals. So if you go to the, a Sony BMG artist site, this is the core of their code, but don't tell them that. Um, so here we, we see we have some latest activity, uh, some other information. Um, we click around, uh, we have the admin module here. If we go to administer and then build and we can see we've got a ton of views on the site. And of course, my local is just as slow as Mr. Connerton's. Um, so while that's going, I'm going to open another tab admin section. You are running them through here. Just nice and slow. You can see they have a few issues not related to 
Um, so we have all kinds of views here. The features page is loading. I do have my NetBeans fired up, however. Um, good, that did load. Admin build features. Um, to, to get it, you're just gonna drush download or drush enable or the traditional route of you know, wget or download, extract, install. Um, we already have a couple features on this system, um, but uh, we're gonna create another feature. And you just do that by clicking create feature. Um, hopefully now that most of the site has been cached, we're not gonna run into the slowness issue. Um, Basically, you want to put in a name and a description. Everything else is optional. Um, version number, URL of update. Uh, but for name, we're just going to call this uh, test feature. This is a test of the feature system. And then we have all these components. So uh, basically, you see CCK through views here. These are all the different items that you can include. Yeah, you can't include taxonomy, um, some block stuff. Uh, you can include block settings, but not really individual blocks themselves, not taxonomy. Um, like, like Mr. Connors in there, I myself like to start with content types as well. Uh, CCK is all the different CCK elements that you have on your site. So uh, when you see stuff there, You'll see video, landing page, et cetera. Those are individual fields within the content. Um, but if you go to the content type, then you can click on any one of those. Uh, we'll choose news article. And then it will then you know, take all the strong arm variables. It'll take any of the dependencies and any fields that news article requires. Um, additionally, uh, we, we can you know, choose multiple components, et cetera. And it's just gonna keep building this list on the side. And what I really wanna show you guys is uh, the code and everything behind the scenes. Um, so we've got our content type. There's a couple of views associated with some of this stuff. Um, all the views for this site have been included in other features. Um, you can also choose different roles. And that's one of the cool thing about working with features is that as you add items to your feature, the, the, those items from the list within the dropdown get deprecated. So then you don't have, you don't end up, you know, reusing the same components over and over. Um, you can basically uh, get your entire site bundled up without a whole bunch of unnecessary redundancy. And in a lot of cases, redundancy is good, but in the features, they handle it nicely. Uh, when you download the feature, it's going to um, if you have one already named that, or there's a module on the site, it's gonna let you know that there's you know, nothing good coming of that. Um, you save the file, it puts it in a tar. Um, hopefully I don't have anything disgusting on this computer. Uh, let me extract here. So you see we get all these files created. We get our .info and .module, which are, uh, if you went to the module creation talk earlier, you're gonna see that those uh, are the two core files that are required for when you create a module. Um, the .module, all it has is an include in it, and we're gonna look at that once I uh, open up NetBeans over here. Um, in order to get the feature installed on your site, all you have to do is take that directory that was created and throw in a dash R here. Make sure it doesn't spit angry fire at me. Go client summary. AWS public sites all modules. Now this modules directory here. Um, the, the way that I like to keep my sites all modules directory is with a custom, a contrib, and a features uh, section in here. Um, 
that way you know, you know what came from Drupal.org, what you wrote yourself, and what you bundled up as a feature. So I'm just gonna throw this in features here. Um, and now if we go there, We go in here, we see test features in there, and now when we go to the site itself, um, now that we've created the feature, we can go to admin build modules, and we will see our features module in there, and all you have to do is enable it. There it is. So test feature, all we have to do is select it, enable it. It's then going to show up in our uh, features list. So I've enabled that feature. We see test feature there. It's in the default state. Uh, that's because no views or blocks or anything have been overridden, um, nor has any of the code been updated by your favorite text editor, et cetera. Um, one great thing I think about features is once you've created your feature, if you're updating the existing components within that feature, you don't have to go through that download process and move the files over, et cetera, anymore. Um, if you update the view, um, it recognizes that you already have that view in your feature, and it just overwrites the code. However, if you add an additional view or um, you know, additional content type, et cetera, you're gonna have to go back through that download process, you know, recreate the feature, basically. Copy it, move it over, and, uh, and then revert the feature. Um, so, I mean, that, that's basically the basis of features, but well, my fa I'm, I'm a coder, um, so I'm gonna show you the coding end of stuff. Um, so here I have this feature here. So we see the, the dot info, this is for a Georgetown site. Um, we see all these dependencies that depends on everything from you know, content, C tools. Uh, of course, it depends on features. You have to have features to use features. Um, taxonomy views, et cetera. Um, you can choose whatever dependencies you want. Uh, you can edit this file, add your own dependencies. If for some reason it didn't show up in the list, like say some other feature already required this module or something else, and it's no longer in the list, you can manually add it here. Um, and then, of course, you can update the description. Uh, and then this, this little section with the features and then the square bracket, it basically is letting you know what each little piece in all these little, all these files included in like G-Town homepage here, um, what items it's going to call. So basically, this is kind of setting up the file name, function name uh, kind of stuff. Uh, when we actually, when we go into the dot module, typically all you would see is three lines. You would see this PHP, a blank line, and an include once. And that include once is including the dot features dot ink file that features generates. And that really is gonna have the bulk of your code uh, included in it. And uh, so, so this is where it's pulling in the CTools plugin information, um, some different image cache items. Uh, the, the views, if you've written custom modules before or if you've exported a view via the interface, it's gonna look extremely familiar because basically what it's doing is it's setting up the views array and if you wanted to update this feature yourself or create a module, um, uh, 
I, th I think using features as an idea of understanding module development is great because if you choose a view and export it and it puts it in the code, this is exactly how you would write a view in code to then get it to show up on your system. So you can go through here, it's setting up the views array and then setting up all the different uh, items within the view object or array and, um, and sending that all back. And again, the feature that you just created is a normal module uh, like you would create yourself or get from drupal.org, uh, some contrib source, whatever. Uh, so you can add your custom code and I normally always add you know, this custom code section here. Um, so I added my own hook block into this set of code uh, to, to do a couple things. Um, and some of them uh, you know, do, I did a hook filter block there um, and different links, et cetera. You, you can add as much to this dot module file as you would like. This is something that features, if you add this to the dot module file, features isn't going to show it as an overridden state because uh, the dot module is only going to have those three lines. So it's like, okay, these three lines are there. Anything extra is gravy, but it's not affecting the core of the feature that you just created. So have at it in the dot module. Um, and that's where you put all your code. Um, super great about features is, like I said, uh, if you're working by yourself, you're not gonna care too much about the database changing a lot, um, but you have multiple people on a project and that's typically what's gonna happen on you know, some enterprise level Drupal site. And so you, you've got your, your code here and I'm going to go back a, a couple of directories to the site root. Um, so if I wanna show my git branches, so currently I'm working off the master branch, but I want to work on this feature, but I don't wanna affect anybody else. So um, what I might do is I might do something like uh, git checkout dash b for branch, uh, give it some kind of name like dev dash test underscore feature, check it out from origin master, uh, and that's just the convention that I use because I use GitHub. Um, and then what you can do is, bam, you've switched to the, you've created a new branch, you've switched to it, you can work on your feature, so you've basically kind of branched off of the project while everybody else is working on their own system, uh, working on the different code, you can work on rolling out your feature, and what's very useful about branching while using features is that when you branch off and use your feature, like I said before, uh, when you select items from the list that you want to include in your feature, those items get deprecated from that list. If somebody else is working on another feature, but they're like, aha, I also want to include this content type in this feature because while you know we're bundling up all the features for this site, well, I want to use this feature on this other site, and if it doesn't have that content type included, then you have to manually create it, et cetera. So uh, by getting this information in code, you can branch off, merge back in, and you're not gonna have any real conflicts or anything if uh, features include the, the same items. Um, of course, you will have problems if they include the same function names. Um, so anything that you put in that dot module, you wanna make sure is unique. Um, and then when you get done, you can merge that branch back in. And what this does is it really, really helps with scalability and performance of your site. It helps uh, keep a sanity check on your developers um, and the people maintaining the project. And ju just having it in code, being able to read and see what it's doing, making minor tweaks as you need to. Um, Views writes horrendous code. Um, so if you export the stuff to a feature, you can go in and tweak it. Um, I don't know if anybody's taken a really good look at the SQL queries and stuff that views generates, awful. Um, it's a great tool, but if you want it to scale, uh, you're gonna wanna kinda tweak those items. Um, so you can get this into code and push it up the branch, and if the database should crash or whatever and you hadn't made proper backups, while you might not maintain the content unless you did some kind of node export or whatever, you will have the basis of a working site going forward. Um, so, you know, you, 
once that's going. Um, it, you see default overridden here. If you click on overridden, it's going to tell you, you know, what item is overridden. So there are some block settings in here that are different in the database than are in the code. And uh, uh, so when, when you go through here, you can see what's going on and decide whether or not, okay, the stuff in code is newer, so I want to revert my site, or the stuff on the site is newer and I want to update the code. And you can do that uh, either, you know, through this interface here, which I think is cumbersome. I, I come, like I said, coding background, I hate using a graphical interface and clicking around, it drives me up the wall when all I have to do is type a couple commands. Um, and what I would do here is just drush fu, and then it's for feature update, um, and then whatever feature name, or you can do drush fu all, um, et cetera. That's for updating, so what, what that's doing is taking what's in the database and updating your code. If you do a drush feature revert, or fr, um, for short, that's taking what is in the code and then pushing the changes up to your database. Uh, this makes, you know, if you use Git uh, or have multiple developers or whatever, um, all this item in code, it has accountability for who made the change, whereas if you went into the database, you're not gonna know who made the change. If somebody, uh, like Roger gave in his talk earlier, if you have a lot of people logging in as admin on the site, um, because you haven't properly given the right permissions to each specific person. Um, again, you kind of lose that information in the database. However, in code, you know, you get all the different timestamps, you get the, uh, you know, the tags and everything that you can associate with your version controlling. And um, I'm a big proponent of version control, and perhaps I should have talked about Git with Drupal instead of a second features talk. Um, However, uh, once you get that, you get it merged back into main, you get it pulled into your database, and that's the nuts and bolts of features. Um, I, I breezed through that b basically because, uh, with the exception of one person here, um, we heard the same talk last time, and it makes for a much nicer video. Um, so I, I wanna open it up to basically, if you have any Drupal questions in general, um, feel free to ask me, or I'm sure my partner wouldn't mind helping out uh, as he is uh, better at speaking aloud. Um, that's features again. <laughs> Sorry if my, uh, my, my feelings about right now came through in my words. Yeah. I <laughs> what about this? I can help with I like it. it. We have the same problem. What would happen if you did this? Like you gave me a I found a problem. How do you do that? It's like this. Well, I disagree with that. Really? Who would have thought of that? Let's, Let's put the word out. out. An OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.